I am so glad that you're all here today. My name is Michelle Rogers, and I am the associate broker, a associate broker with SSGA, and I'm just thrilled to be a part of this team, and I'm really excited to be a part of this webinar today. Just to tell you a little bit about me, a little background, I have been in the early education industry for the past 21 years. I'm currently a center owner, and I have been a multiple site owner as well. During this time, I've also had a parallel life where I've been a licensed realtor. So I'm coming to you today talking about curb appeal and things like that from an educational standpoint, but also have a little bit of that realtor in the background too, especially when we talk about curb appeal. I'm also excited today because we have a very special guest with us. His name is Roberto Ortega. Hello, Roberto. How are you? Hey, how are you, Michelle? Great. Well, we're so excited you're here today and you're going to help walk us through this. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, okay, I'm Roberto Ortega. I'm the, one of the founders and president of KLA Schools. Um, KLA Schools is a um, regio inspired preschool program. Um, we, we are a multi state organization. We have Mostly our centers are located in South Florida, but we do have presence outside of Florida in Texas, Illinois, Kentucky, California, Oregon, and Washington State. Um, we have a total of 17 centers that are currently open, and we also have um, the franchise arm uh, of the company where we um, handpick and partner with the right individuals that want and share the same core value that we have in our organization and want to get it, get in this industry uh, with and part of our brand. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm excited to share um, my thoughts about uh, first impressions and how important those are. We, we, we place a very, very high importance on the look and feel and the environment, uh, the physical environment of our school that we call our third teacher. So, um, uh, you know, I'm glad to be part of this and helping Michelle go through um, this session. Well, we're excited to have you here too. And I need to mention, we also have 25 states represented today and Canada and India. So we've got a great audience and I'm excited about this. Well, why don't we get started? I know you've always heard your mom say that you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. And first impressions are so important in our industry. And the three areas that I thought we could focus on today is with the curb appeal, the front entrance foyer and the tour. So those would be, the, you know, the top three things. There, there's so much that goes into making a first good impression, but I think this is a good place to start. So if we start with our curb appeal, the first thing that I find is um, very significant is your sign, and you may not give a lot of thought to that. But first of all, can they see your sign? Is it large enough? Sometimes when you look at a sign, in a room it looks large, but you put it out there on the road and people have to see it from many feet away and the wording is too small. So I want you to think about the sign that you have. Not only is it large enough, is it in the ideal spot where the most traffic can see it? Does it tell the world what you do on the inside of your building? And that doesn't necessarily mean if it's got blocks, they know you educate uh, young children. It can also mean different things. Um, your sign needs to be a brief window into what you do with your business. For instance, my school is a faith-based school. So on my sign, I would have a cross and that lets people know I'm a faith-based school. That may have some people very interested in what I do and then there's going to eliminate others. Is that a bad thing to eliminate others? Not necessarily because if we're not a good fit for them, we certainly don't want to waste their time or our time. So I think your sign is very important. It needs to be, say what you do, it needs to be in, in a highly visible area, and it needs to be able to be read. 
and you may even want to draw a little of attention to it. Um, we have some disposable helium tanks, and every once in a while we may tie some balloons to it because balloons catch people's eyes. No one wants to miss a party. Um, Roberto, is there anything special about the signs that you have with your schools? No, well, uh, you know, I think with the signs, uh, you, you also have to be a little bit creative sometimes because of, you know, regulations and, and, and zoning ordinances. Sometimes, you know, the, the typical sign that we envision to have um, you know, outside of our schools is, is not the one that is actually permitted or allowed. So um, be creative on your sign. Uh, not only, you know, my recommendation is, uh, I, you know, I like to have the, the traditional sign and, in the facade of the building, but also, you know, if your school has a parking lot or if your school has, a, I guess, a parking lot that basically faces uh, the street, you know, try to put some signage closer to the street. Also, if you go through the parking, you know, it's kind of like nice to have those signs that says, you know, welcome to, you know, continue to drive this way or, you know, little cute signs that you can put there that people can already feel that they are within the boundaries of, of your school, not just simply coming into this parking lot and then you see the building kind of like in the far back. So think about the signage as, yes, the traditional sign on your building, but if you can do stuff on the parking lot, if you can do the stuff more closer to the street, um, that also is something that we take um, that we usually that we usually do, and and we like also to revamp the the signage. You know, perhaps you know something that has been out there for ten years. You know, there's already a little bit of wear and tear there. So you know, maybe time for you to think about you know remodeling it or 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 you know, putting new lighting or uh, refresh it a little bit. No. So, that's yeah, I, I think that's, that's great points. You, you need to kind of have some upkeep on your sign and definitely want to check with the ordinances of, the, you know, the, the town that you live in or that you work in, rather, to make sure that your sign is going to meet their criteria. So, great. Those, those are some, some great points as well. Um, as well as signs is landscaping, because if your sign has drawn somebody in and wants to take a closer look, when they pull in, they want to see that your landscaping is maintained. I think if you pull in somewhere and there's overgrown weeds or untrimmed bushes, it may give the appearance that that is what is going on in the inside too, that things are not kept the way they should be. So I would say that, you know, make an investment. I know that when I pull into my school every day, I am so used to pulling in my school that sometimes I don't look at it through the eyes of a parent or through a prospective parent and see what might need to be changed. I usually am just pulling in my parking spot and I'm going to work. But I would say step back and look at your landscaping from a prospective parent's point. Do you need to trim some bushes? Do you need to um, maybe plant some grass where there's bare areas? Do we need to mow? Um, there, it really is so important because you want it neat. And I would say in the in the seasons that you can, plant some flowers and not expensive. They're easy to maintain. And I think flowers make people happy. Um, Roberto, was there anything you wanted to add about landscaping? No, I, I think that um, those are good ideas. I think that other thing that you need to think about is when you know, if your building is one where you don't have a space for landscaping because you're in a super ur in a super urban location uh, that basically you don't have landscaping uh, to work with. Well, that doesn't mean that you cannot have right outside the front doors, you know, nice plants that you can put kind of like to to make warm and fussy the process of coming into your building so not just because oh well in my center i don't have la any landscaping that doesn't mean that you cannot have uh, landscaping um, around the entrance of the school or 
kind of like in the in the walkway or in the pathway that your customers have to go through before um, getting into into your building. So um, it's it's all about being creative. So um, and thinking outside the box uh, on 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 these type of things. You know, uh, on the landscaping, there's the traditional landscaping, but if you think about other other things that you can do with it, you'll be amazed by. Uh, uh, the things that will come to your mind and you'll be able to do. Uh, so that that's what I would add. I think those are great things to add. And we're probably, we're going to talk a little bit more too about getting into the front entrance and uh, we'll, some of those ideas there as well. Um, parking, if you think about your parking lot, it takes up a lot of space. So if your parking lot is in disrepair, that's a lot of disrepair that somebody is pulling in and looking at. So I think it's really important that you maintain your parking lot. And yes, it can be very costly, but you should not have to do it that often. You need to make sure the paving is fresh. In worst case, you can go to any of the home improvement stores, purchase parking lot paint, and at least freshen up the stripes on the side of the, you know, the, the parking lot paint. And that should pop and help make a difference there. One of yeah. the things we like to do in our center is um, we like to have a special visitor parking space. I think it just helps people feel welcomed and make them feel like they're special. So take a look at your parking. I know you have a certain amount of handicap, but let one parking space be for visitors. Have it labeled so, so they know where they can park. And for us, we schedule our tours. Um, and when we do that, we know the name of the family that's coming in. So you could even put that family's name on that visitor parking or as a little welcome thing. But you need to pay attention to it. It's stuff that we don't think about every day. We drive in our parking lots, we park on them, but how do they look? And do they need some, some attention? And, and they may. So we kind of keep a look at that as well. And I think, um, you know, that kind of looks at our curb appeal portion of this and Roberta I don't know there is there something anything else you want to add um, not just sign landscaping or parking is there anything else that we you think we could share with you know, yes on the parking it's amazing when you put a fresh new coat of um, of, of, of paint um, over the, the parking lot and, and, and you kind of like restripe the parking lot you don't know how it, it's amazing I mean the whole property looks like a look, looks like brand new so even if the building isn't brand new anymore but if you work on the on the striping and on the surfacing of the of the parking lot you don't know how that sparks um and makes it makes it look fresh makes it makes it look new um you know we just um you know went through an acquisition in kentucky where we purchased a school and we revamped the image of the school and uh, and we did um, we did work on the striping of the parking lot. It wasn't it wasn't too expensive. It was definitely on the affordable side, and it was a, a heck of a move because it really enhanced that first impression of the parents as they're driving uh, to the building. So uh, I highly recommend uh, taking care of the parking. It's the last thing you think of, but you don't know how. How, how good it is or how how bright it makes it look the whole thing when you when you have the, the parking lot we strike. I agree. Was there anything else with curb appeal that I that maybe we need to share? Or do, you, do you think we, we gave them some basics? Yep. <laughs> well, now we've got them to pull into our parking lot and they have their parking space. So the next place that we have an opportunity to impress them is with our front entrance and our foyer area. And of course, with the front entrance, um, I say the number one thing is make sure it's clean. Make sure those doors are clean. If you have glass front doors, every day you need to, to wipe them down, get a little Windex. You've got a lot of little fingers and ha you know hands and noses touching that glass. So you want it to, to look clean. and, and um, some of the other things you can do, like what Roberto had mentioned, <clears throat> we can put some greenery out front, have some nice planted pots in the front, put a welcome mat down. It really gives that that homey feeling. And 
we want our parents to feel like this is their child's home away from home, and it should be. So it needs to feel that way too. One of the things that we do at the front entrance of our school is we have some large faux ceramic parts that we got at a home improvement store. And I can change those out seasonally. They're, they're tall pots and in the spring we put um, giant fake flowers in it. I know it sounds tacky, but I promise you it looks really pretty. Uh, in the summer I put beach umbrellas in there. In the fall, we put the corn stalks and the scarecrows, and then the holiday time, we can put, um, you know, some evergreens with some lights, and I just keep replacing it. It's easy to change out. It's big. It makes a statement, and it's fun. It lets them know that, you know, it's, it's just a fun thing. So I just, you know, you want to put some focus. Again, just step outside. Look at your front entrance and look at it from a different perspective and see if you were a parent, what you would change or, or what makes you feel welcome or what doesn't make you feel welcome. And it's a, it's a quick fix. You can throw some wreaths on the door, something that, that just says home. Um, I don't know, how are your front entrances, Roberto? Are they the same in all of, of your schools or do you like to do something different and be creative? No, I mean, our front entrance um, are, I mean, are similar to, to, to the industry. Um, we have, um, some things that kind of like are unique to our context that I will share. Um, one of the things that I that I put very close attention um, is that you know the moment that somebody walks in, um, I, I want them to have a smell of cleanliness and a sm uh, you know kind of like a fresh smell. Um, and I think that that's that's very important, um, and I highly recommend. That, that you work on, on that, uh, aside of making sure that it's, everything is in order, well painted, and you know you have an area for people to see while they wait for whoever is gonna do the tour for them, et cetera. But the smell, it's, it's very important. Um, you know, in some, of, in some of our schools where we have people, like a, like a huge international community, or I guess diversity in our parents, we like to highlight in the entrance, we have like a, like a map where we say, you know, where different families are coming from different places of the world or states within the country. And that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but I guess it, something to think about that it perhaps is not something that comes to mind when you think about the front entrance is you open that door, you know, you want kind of like that fresh air to come, you know? Um, I would I would definitely recommend something like that aside of making sure that it just looks super nice, super clean in order, um, and that and that people you know are ready to greet and, and meet people as they walk in. You know? I I agree with you. I would say one of the other um, key concerns for parents when they first enter your facility is definitely the security. They want to know that their child is going to be secure. So when they walk in, they're looking to see that that facility is secure. So I always make sure that all the doors are closed and locked. We have a key code system in our school so that you know the door is automatically closed and you can't access it without the key code. We have cameras. Um, and when a parent comes in, we naturally want to point those things out to them, but at the, on the other hand, too, technically they're a stranger to our school. So what we do is we have a guest book, and we have them register a visitor log, and we, we ask them to write down some information, and we take a photocopy of their identification, their driver's license, and that is because we need to know who is in this school, who is in the school with our children, and hopefully as a prospective family, they're seeing that we take security seriously and we are going to do this when their child is enrolled. We're not gonna let just anybody come in or somebody we don't know come in. We're gonna find out exactly who is in that center with us. And as a side note, by taking a photocopy of their license, later on in life, you can use that to follow up with them, whether you're gonna send them a little card or, you know, if you just want to communicate them, communicate with them later. So don't be afraid to ask for that photocopy. You have every right to know that that person standing in front of you is who they say they are, 
and that they're there for the right reasons, you've got these little ones to protect. So I think that's, that's really important is to highlight security right off the bat. Um, Roberto, do you have, um, how, how is your security systems? You have, I'm sure you have the cameras and the secured entrances. Is there anything else? So I, so yes, we have the cameras. Um, we have also the keypad um, for families to come in and, and do uh, and type in their their um, their passcode and be able to to go in. What what we have though is we always like to have uh, the main, in other words, the front door that uh, that you know allows you to come into the foyer basically, and then we also have a second door. That is the one that allows you to actually go into the school hallways and, and classrooms. So, so both of them have uh, have locks. So, and 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 actually, uh, on the front door, in, in most of our schools, they need to be buzzed in. And then it's once they're in the foyer that then they put the the their their passcode and are able to uh, to go in. Uh, also, very important uh, for new families or people that are doing tours. Uh, I agree with you on, on asking for identification. I think that's that's very important. You always want to know the identity of, of of the people that are inside the facilities. Um, uh, I've heard about uh, having panic buttons uh, at, at the at the reception desk at, at, at the front. Uh, so whoever is in the whoever is in the front uh, at the front of the of the school, you know, we want to make sure that if there is a situation of an emergency, they can they can hit a panic button and everyone is going to get on 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 alert mode. You know? So that's also something to to think about from uh, from a security perspective. And then I'm sure you've you've heard this before, but you know we have to be very careful when. You know, especially during the peak times of drop-off, that you know when parents come in, uh, you know you, the, the person who's at the front is always keeping an eye on the front door because we don't want people to sneak in as somebody's opening, as somebody's opening the door, you know? and and that's something uh, that we need to keep a close eye uh, all the time. You know? Yeah, I agree. This is probably the one area you need to invest some money in is in security, um, just for your peace of mind, but also because in today's days and times, it's just important. So, um, you know, you and you want a prospective family to see that right away. So next, now they're in your front foyer. So we are ready to do the tour. Um, and this is this is an important part of your program, whether you think about it this way or not, you are a salesperson and you are selling what you believe in, what you've created, and what you know to be a, an excellent educational experience. So the tour is serious. This is like your, your sales meeting, so to speak. And I think the first thing, there, nothing else is going to put someone at ease than, than a smile. You want someone up front that is always going to be warm and receptive and is gonna have that smile. You do not want your stressed out uh, assistant director up there who is having a hard day and that's gonna show. <clears throat> so make sure whoever's doing your tours is in a place of happiness so that that will, will convey over to your parents. Um, so the greeting's important. If they have their child with them, make a big deal about that child. Even though you've got hundreds on the other side of the doors, that's their only child. So that is the most important child that is in their life and it should be your focus at the time. One of the things that we like to do is if we have children that are old enough to understand stickers, we used to do lollipops, we do stickers now. Um, stickers are great, kids love stickers. Just a little, um, almost like a pass put um, little book that they can take with them and as they tour different areas, we can go ahead and give them a little sticker in their book um, and that kind of helps them get excited and want to see something new and it's something that they take with them when they leave. So it's a great thing for them to remember you by. But your, um, your greeting is important. Um, do something to make that child feel special. Do something to have those parents know that that child is special. Um, 
And then from that, we go into what I call the first senses. And Roberto has already mentioned this, is when they walk in, you want to have that fresh smell. You do not want to smell diapers. It's got to be almost like um, grandma's kitchen during the holidays with a slight hint of bleach, if you can try to imagine that. So it's very important that you, you keep up with that. If you've got a lot of diaper changes going on, make sure that those diapers are getting brought outside to the dumpster. Um, we use plugins in our school. We have them sporadically placed and, and that just kind of helps freshen the air. And there are some industrial or commercial fresheners that you could use as well. But I agree that the, the, the sense of smell is, is gonna hit them immediately. So you wanna make sure it's a good one. And also the sense of sight. How does it look? Does it look cluttered and does it look messy and unorganized? because that could give them the impression that that's how you run that school. Or does it look professional with a touch of Disney? Because you also want it to be intriguing to the children that you're serving. So I'd say this is a great area also to make an investment. You could invest in a mural. You could invest in um, maybe a window that overlooks a playground, uh, something hanging from the ceilings, you know, model airplanes or kites, something fun. But at the same time, make sure that desk is organized. We do not allow food or drink at our front desks. Um, we just, we wanna give, you know, the sense of professionalism because we are, a pro we are professionals. So that's something that I think you need to put some focus on too. Um, Roberta, what do you have in your foyers? Do you put something special in there or? Do you have murals or anything? So um, what we like to have, um, kind of like, not necessarily in the foyer. I mean, in the foyer we have um, basic information of the school. Um, like, I, like I said before, like a little map that identifies kind of like where the students come from. And, but then it, it's when you go, it's when you start the tour and go through that second door that takes you to the hallways is that yes, we have a lot of uh, what we call documentation in our hallways. And when it starts with um, uh, kind of like our story, uh, you know, the story of how we came to be and, and, and a timeline of the school. So if the school is 10 years old, you can kind of like see the story of the school for the last uh, uh, 10 years. Um, for us, the tour, um, we like to, of course, provide the information that, that parents want, but we make it like a, like a story. Uh, I feel like families, uh, you know, buy into a program, but at the same time, they love to hear the story behind the program, and that has yielded for us very, very good results. Um, so we we try to. It's a sales process, but we make it we make it. Um, a, sound like a story and, and we, we want the parents to feel our passion for what we do. And we felt like the best way to, uh, for them to feel that passion was to basically go through our story and how we came to be uh, every time we, we do a tour. Well, I, I think that's, that's some great suggestions too. I love the idea of the map where families are from. Um, I know where I'm in the Memphis area and we're very diversified and I have families from all over. So I think that's a great idea. And I'm, I just may use that in my center, Roberto. Thank you. Um, also, you know, going back to the senses, you know, what does it smell like? What does it look like? What does it sound like? You want to hear laughter, um, not crying. So that that's pretty important too. You know, be aware of the sounds that are going on. It happens. I, I've been doing this a long time. You may have a child that's having a hard time transitioning or a teacher that is having a tough day. Um, you know you have a tour coming in and take, take control of it before they, before they get there. See a way to soothe that child or to give that teacher a break so that when new prospective families are coming in, they are hearing laughter and they are hearing, um, they're not hearing the sounds of crying and whatnot. And then going on to senses, the sense of touch, like we talked about in your front foyer, in this this front entrance, it's almost the entrance to your home. 
what do you have there that perhaps a child could be touching while you're having a conversation with an adult or even something that the parents can put their hands on besides just your brochures have some educational information i mean there's so much out there the cdc um, all sorts of uh, the colleges put stuff out and that kind of also gives them a sense that you're in the know, that you have this information, you know what's going on in the industry. So I would say go ahead and, and do that as well. I think the only sense we're not going to touch on is taste. That's up to you. I know there are certain days that I have special tour days for maybe a large business that specifically they're coming in. I may have cookies out for them or some sort of refreshment. Um, so that's something that, that you could possibly do. You know, you get a little nervous with food allergies, offering it to anyone coming in, but, and it can get expensive to feed everybody cookies, but that is the, the one of the suggestions to hit that sense. Um, after that, it's tour time. This is it. It's, it's time to go. This is what we have to do. What we've done is we've taken our, our fire escape maps and we've put X's, just like a pirate's map, of treasures, of areas within our school that there is something worth talking about. So as we are going and giving these tours, we have been trained or we have practiced on the areas that we're going to stop and we know what we're going to say, whether it's stopping at the monitors to show them our security or it's um, stopping at the front entrance where we have a STEM program in place we're going to make all these stops and anyone who is is authorized to give a tour is going to know these, these specific things we're going to practice them and then once i get into the classrooms i like to introduce the teachers that are in there and i want to say something special about them whether it's um lisa this is miss lisa she can speak five languages or miss debbie she has her master's in education i want to um to talk about something unique and special about them and then you know what i step back and it's my teacher's turn to take over in the sales process and i take their place interact with the children and i let them explain their classroom explain their day their lesson plans how they communicate with the parents um, i think it's important for them to have that interaction because you, you get a good feel for whether you click with that teacher or not. So that is something that, that we do. And our teachers don't just know to do that, we train them to do that. We have specific training on tours. And we, um, we do, during the, the course of a month, we have two things, we have lead teacher meetings and then we have lunch and learns. And during our lead teacher meetings, you know, we will cover that at least once a quarter. This is what expect, is expected of you from a tour. You are to smile, you are to greet them, and you are to answer their questions. We make sure that they have a sample portfolio and they have some of our um, curriculum that they can show them. So they really, um, they, they become the key salespeople there. And I've got some teachers that are phenomenal with this. But we let them practice and we help train them. What about you, Roberto? Do you do anything like that? So in you know so in our tours, like I said before, you know we we try to uh, we're all about you know thinking outside the box and not assuming that somebody would come from another preschool that they're going to be giving kind of like a traditional tour. So we like to you know be different uh, be different on uh, on the on the tour as well. So we like to. Uh, we like to make it more of a, of a conversation than actually uh, the person uh, following at a script. You know? So that's kind of like the, the general idea of, of the tool. Of course, we do have an outline of the things that they have to, to that the people that do the tours have to say, but we, we like to make it more like a, like a storytelling, you know, and then it becomes a, then it becomes a, a conversation. We want to establish a relationship uh, with the family that is doing the tour. Um, and that way they, they feel they feel warm, they feel like they can open up with you, they'll share where they have been before, what they like about other schools, etc. So you actually are able to draw a lot of positive things and conclusions. Yeah, I think that those are those are great suggestions to, to handle it that way. 
Um, the other thing I would say too is, uh, you know, for us, we we try to schedule as many tours as we can. Part of that is we're full with a waiting list, so I feel we could do that if that if it were different. And I, I would just open it up to whoever come on in when you can. But if you know in advance you have a tour coming in, I let my teachers know. You know, they could be. Ha it's just like at the house. You know, you might have company. You just kind of keep it a little bit cleaner, a little bit straightened up, a little more organized. So I would say communicate. You know, with your tours too. Um, you know, so. one, thing, one thing, if I may, Michelle, um, in terms of um, the sounds, you know, of course, you mean, it's inevitable that they're going to, while, while, while they're in the school, you know, unless they're in nap time, they go in at nap time, which I highly not recommend doing tours during nap time, nap time. But if you're doing tours, you know, around 10, 11 a.m., they're, of course, going to see um, the children in action, you know, and that's fine. But I always like to have in my hallways kind of like a little bit of like, a, like music. Uh, mm -hmm. So think about when you're going to, uh, when you're going to uh, a spa or, or something where there's always this, this music going on that kind of like relax you. It doesn't have to be that type of music. But as much as sometimes you know, you're in the school and, and you can hear the kids. Sometimes you go to the school and the school is quiet because everyone is inside their classrooms and there's nobody in the hallways. So, I mean, I don't like, of course, during the tour, children crying all over the place, but I also don't like the hallways to be completely silent. So I think that by having some music playing in the hallways all the time, I think that you're able to, uh, that helps you both ways. You know, whenever there's a children crying, it kind of like blocks it a little bit. And when there's nobody in the hallways, um, the music helps. And for those that are, you know, developing new schools or or just recently opening up a school, and you're ramping up, so you don't have that many children. You know, that's even more important because you don't want them to come into this beautiful facility and and kind of like give the impression that it's empty. Mm -hmm. So the music kind of like fills the environment a little. So uh, I would I would put a, a close attention to that in in the hallways where the people are going to be walking uh, during a tour. That that's a great idea. That's something that um, I think I might want to incorporate in my center as well. We do, we have music usually playing in the classrooms, especially the younger ones, the infants. We like to always have that, but not in the hallways. And I like that. That's a that's a good idea. Okay, so at this point, we've your sign has gotten them to pull into your parking lot. Your parking lot has gotten them to go to your foyer. Foyer has gotten them on the tour. They've toured it. So now you're at the end of the tour. I don't know about you, Roberto, but my center is always full, even if it isn't, because I like to create that sense of, oh my goodness, I need to get a spot here. Or I like to have, I hate to say it, an out if I just don't feel like it's going to be a good match. Um, do you do anything like that, or are you more up, up front and trustworthy than me? Well, you know, we, we you know, of course, it's important that, that, that parents feel that. And what I tell my, my directors and the people that do the tours is, you know, even if you're not full, you need to sound confident that what you have is, is, is a good program. And, a, and, and what happens to us is, Michelle, is that, you know, my, in my case, the schools that are not uh, at capacity are not because we've, we've, we've had them for 10, 15 years and, they, and they've never been at capacity, it's because they're new centers. You know, we're fairly new. Uh, we have all, we're, ten, we're only 10 years old, and, and most of my centers are three, four years old. So they're all going through the ramp up process. So what we like to say to the parents is, you know, we know that we're different. We know that we have a super high quality program. Um, we're not concerned about not being full on certain days. And we actually turn that around and say, well, while we're in the process of ramping up, you know, take advantage of the super low ratios that we have. You know? So we kind of like turn things around. You know? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great way to handle that too for, you know, new schools that are ramping up. I, I like that. Um, the other part with the clothes, 
um, what I think is really important is that when those prospective families leave your center, you want them to walk out with something in hand that they're going to remember you by. So I say invest in a good brochure, like none of this photocopy of, you know, of a photocopy of a photocopy. Invest in a nice brochure, Matt, a color brochure, something that speaks quality so that when they have left you and have toured several other schools and they get home and they have everything in front of them, they remember you and they have something worthwhile to remember you by. Plus, don't forget, you made that great impression with their child. The child's going to remember the sticker book and he's going to, he or she is going to like you because you, you know, took an interest in them. But definitely invest some money in a brochure um, and business cards. Those are, those are two things that I think you need to have a high quality of. And then we sometimes, um, you know, depending on how I feel about how the tour went, I may give them a parent handbook to take with them. Um, I would go ahead and give them an enrollment pack if you don't do enrollment online. Um, I don't give everybody the parent handbook because they cost money, let's, let's face it, and it, it may not be something that's going to work out, but definitely the brochure is what you have to do. And if you have a center that has low turnover, why not include a little biography on the teacher for the child's room that they're touring for, or a little welcome letter about the room that is more specific. Um, and that, that will help too once they're back at home to see that smiling face that they met in the classroom and to remember that and hopefully have some good, good feelings about that. Um, Roberta, would you say anything else about, you know, I don't know what, do you have like a quality brochure you pass out or? Yes, we do have, um, we do have a, a brochure and, and we like to, we, what we have is we have a brochure that we don't necessarily give out the brochure to everyone. I mean, it really has to be somebody that, that we have an impressive tour with, we, we, we give the brochure. Otherwise, we have a folder where we have the forms. And I agree, you know, I don't give, I give just enough information for them to, to take home and be able to make the decision to rent. So, you know, everything else, uh, I guess, information about our curriculum program and all that, they can look into our website. Parent handbook, they can get once they register, uh, but not, not before. Yeah, I think that sounds great. And then there's the follow-up. You know, hopefully you've had that prospective family sign into your visitor blog. You have a photocopy of their identification. You have their address. You have some pertinent information. Um, and if they're not enrolling immediately, if they do walk out without making a decision, I think it's important to follow up with it within the first couple of days just to reach out to them and and get some feedback, what positive or negative. You, you want to know, A, that that person's either made a choice to come into your center and why, or they've made a choice not to come to your center and why, and kind of take a look at that. So um, we, we like to do that follow-up, and it's got to be done quickly. How about, do you have a format in place, Roberto, that you have your directors do? No, you know, we don't, I have to say. We, um, yeah, that, that's just my, that is my key thing. I want my director to, within the first few days, to reach out to that family and see if there's any other questions or anything else we can do. Um, For us, what, what we do is, it's not that, it, I guess, after finishing the, once we finish the tour, we kind of like talk to the families and create the expectation of when we're going to reach back. So okay. it's kind of like in the, on the, on the on the on the sheet of paper it basically says when they're going to be following up for the first time and it's depending on how that first follow-up goes then the next one's then going to okay we're going to follow up two days after that four days after that but the first one we always kind of like come to an agreement with the family of when we're going to be following up because in it's in that call that we're going if they have not registered on the spot which sometimes happens Mm -hmm. um, that's when we're going to have that call, you know, after they have spoken to their significant others in most of the cases, um, and then they're ready to make a decision. It's already a call that it's kind of like we already know when we're going to be following up for the first time. And after that, it kind of like goes into that system that for those of you that have CRMs, you know, you get all these alerts and, 
and the drip campaign of the emails and all that. But the first one, it's kind of like a, it's mutually agreed between whoever does the tour and the family. I think that's a great idea to handle it that way so they know the expectations. You're right. That I think that's great. And then um, just a little hint, when we do have a new family start, we have this little banner maker and we personalize a banner that gets hung on the door and kind of welcomes the family. We let um, our other parents know in our newsletters that we've had a new family start. It just helps everybody kind of reach out and I think it helps that family feel very welcome. So, you know, that's, that's the, the last part of the follow-up. Now the child is enrolled in our center and we want to keep them there, so we want to, you know, make sure that they feel welcomed. And um, I think at this point, I've covered, well, we've we've covered all of the the main highlights of uh, the three areas, and we do have a little bit of time left. So I would be interested to see if anyone has any questions we could answer, um, and we can kind of kind of take it from there. Um, let me see. Okay. I have got a question here. It says, I have heard that it's better to do quick interview with parents to find out their particular areas of interest, but I can't get my director to do this. She just launches into the tour. I have tried to coach her on this and I'm not at the center all the time to give tours myself. Any suggestions? You wanna take that one? <laughs> I mean, I, I have to uh, disagree with, uh, with, with that. I think that there's no uh, secret sauce uh, for the tool. I mean, you, you have to go with that. In my opinion, you have to go with an outline and then assess uh, your client when you're talking to him or her for the first time. I mean, there's, there are some people that are super interested that want a quick tour. And, and you should be able to kind of like look at that outline and make it make it a short and, and very good tour. And there are others that like to spend you know, hours and hours at the school and you also have to have um, a game plan uh, for those. So um, I think it's, it's more important to kind of like create that outline more than an actual script and make sure that the, whoever does the tour is able to go through that outline in as, as quick as 10 minutes or as long as an hour. Uh, but we need to make sure that we cover those points in the outline um, at the rhythm that the client wants to wants to take the tour. Yes, you can you can take the lead. And if somebody wants to be out of there in 10 minutes, perhaps you can push it to 20. Right. And yes, you can. You have to be able to work that out. But you know, whoever wants a, a quick tour uh, wants a quick tour, and you need to be able to um, go through your you know, key selling points and 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 uh, those those unique features that make you uh, uh, unique in your in your in your own market. You know, you need to be able to to tell. Uh, to tell those families those. I mean, I, I, I sometimes when I mystery shop the schools, of course I want to do it as quickly as possible. And and I and I kind of like set the expectation. I said, you know, hey, I'm I'm super interested, but I have no time. Why don't you walk me through, you know, why are you different? And I kind of like tell them what I want to hear. Well, that's because I know that I'm I'm in the industry, but not all families are like that. So Create that little outline, you know, five to ten bullet points, and talk to the director and say, okay, well, let's do a little bit of role playing. Like, if I want a 15-minute tour, how would you go through those points? And if I want a half an hour tour, what will you do? And and go from there. Yeah, so I, I agree with you. I think that that's the the best way to do it, so that you're um you're kind of staying on track for what the expectations are. Let's see. I have another question that says, do you always give tours if a family shows up without an appointment? How do you know what they want? Do you always require the family to fill out a questionnaire? I don't know about you, but if someone's made a point to come and look at my center, we're going to give them a tour even if they don't have an appointment. Um, absolutely, and and I think it goes back to how do you know what they want? It's, it's, it's just a brief introduction, some questions, see what ages their children are, what, and you can kind of get a feel for what's important. Um, 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you what happened to me once. Um, so, so we like to have appointments ideally, but whenever we have walk-ins, we nine ninety nine percent of the time we find a way to to make the tour. Um, one time, in a family a walk-in goes to uh, goes to a school uh, that. It was it was it was full. It was at capacity, but despite being at capacity, we always tour, even if they they have or they don't have a, a an appointment. But in this time, it was a day that the school was preparing for an open house, so this was like an hour or two before the actual open house that somebody shows up uh, for a tour. I think it was on a staff development day or something. So. At that time, we, 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 had to, we had to say to the family, you know, unfortunately, uh, we're not going to be able to tour you today because of these reasons. And, but here is a, a tour packet that you can take with you and please contact us next week uh, or tomorrow so that we can do uh, a full tour for you. Well, it turns out that, that they were so upset uh, that we were not able to tour them that they went back home, they went online and started to uh, hit us with bad reviews on, on Yelp, I think it was in that case. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was unfortunate because uh, I, we were not able to bring that um, review down. They didn't want it to come back. And we just had to, we just have a bad review that we had to respond. Um, but, you know, it's just never expected, you know, there's, you know, this case, somebody that wasn't happy just because we didn't give the tour went out there and and ding us with a with a bad review. So uh, you just don't you just never know how they're going to react. So um, something to think about when you decide to tell somebody that you're not able to tour them on the spot. So based on that experience, would your um, advice be if you can try to make the time to make the time to tour them? Yeah. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. If you can try to make the time, make the time. I mean, I think it's better to say, even if your expert on doing tours is not there, you know, have somebody that can show them around, that can give them some information, so at least they know that you tried and that you were honest about the director not being available or your enrollment specialist not being uh, not being there. Uh, but at least show them that you did go the extra mile to to help them out. I mean, sometimes they drive. That's another thing. I mean, if they, if you ask them, you know, you know, do you live around the corner and things like that? Well, when it's easy for them to come back at another time, that also helps. I mean, if somebody has come for like a 20 minute ride or a 20 from 20 miles away, um, is relocating and things like that. We we like to we like to make the effort. I mean, I think it's also important to know the circumstances before uh, you you decide whether or not to tour them. But the advice is, like Michelle says, yes, do do try your best to accommodate. Yeah, ab absolutely. I agree with you. I think that's that's good advice. Okay, well, we have several more questions. I think we're probably only going to have time for one more. So this one is any suggestions on how to get your people to buy into the first impression concept, like picking up trash and making things more tidy? Any incentive? Do you have an incentive plan for your teachers? Um, you if they do it? <laughs> well, no, uh, I don't have an incentive. Um, I know sometimes you have to pay more to make them do their job and, and but I, I guess that's where the intangible comes into play you know we we like the teachers to feel that you know their place of work is is theirs as well so i don't know it's it's we don't the, the answer is we don't we we just simply try to you know provide other sorts of perks for the staff for them to enjoy coming to work and taking care of their place of work and classrooms. I know that sounds that sounds easy to say and, and it's difficult to implement and believe me it is difficult to implement for me as well. Um, but with time you you get it. Uh, but we know we don't 
we don't provide incentives for them to, to keep the space nice and clean though. Well, I know with, with us, you know, it's, it's a little different for me only having one center where you have many, but I also try to model good behavior. And if I see something on the ground, I'm going to stop and pick it up and hopefully they're going to take notice. Um, but I agree, you want them to feel like this is their center, so they are going to want it to be clean and tidy as well. Um, there's only so much you can do, though. Absolutely. Well, I'm hoping that today that we've shared some ideas with you that might help to make a good first impression for your center. And I'm very grateful that you've allowed us to have this time. I realize this is probably lunch time for most of you, so thank you for allowing us to share lunch with you. Um, if there, there are some other questions, I will try to answer them privately. The other thing I would um, tell you, you know, if you have a curb appeal question or a front foyer question, if you want to take a picture of what you're questioning about and send it to me, I'd be more than happy to make some suggestions on changes you could possibly make. Um, so we're here for you with that or any other questions, do not hesitate to email us or contact us. And I know you guys are going to want to stay tune for our next webinar that is coming up uh, Thursday, May 18th, which the question is to lease or to buy. So that, that will be, I think, a very informative webinar. There's a lot of centers that are expanding these days. I'm glad to hear that. Roberto, thank you so much for all your information and for being here today. Um, really enjoyed this. And um, thank you all, and I'll see you next webinar. Y'all take care. <laughs>